Grammatical Chan Corla. Um, I suppose, well, there's a number of things that, I mean, I think everybody is support, supporting this legislation and it is vitally required to ensure that uh, micro, micro enterprises can continue to work or have the, the, res, the resources put in, favor, in place for them to continue to work on in, in, in Ireland in the current climate. And I think the one thing we need to consider, first of all, is why we've arrived at this, uh, this state. And it's because of the, the length of time that it's taken to uh, arrive at a government that, that, that legislation couldn't be passed during this period. And that, while that may, may be, um, that's maybe unusual that you have the coronavirus coming up with a, a general election and cr all clashing together and making this happen. But I think we do have to look, and as a body politic, we have to look at uh, how our constitution uh, impacts on that. Because the constitution was written at a time when we had two and a half parties in the state um, back in 1937 where it was envisaged that Fianna Fáil and Fan Gael would interchange. Um, one would be out of power and one would be in power and they would be straight, straight into a government taking place. And that, and the reality of the things, and, 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 and right across Europe is not unusual to Ireland or anywhere else, but that doesn't happen anymore. So there is a time that's going to be taken for after all elections for uh, legislation to take place and, or for negotiations to take place and parties to come together to form a government. So I think we, we have to recognise that, and I, th and I would call on the government to actually um, look, look at that and look at the constitutional requirements um, and put in place a, a referendum probably to make that happen. because. That is something that will need to be looked at because we don't want to arrive at the, after the next general election where you have the same problem where um, le urgent legislation may be required and then we have to wait on the formation of a government. So I think you can, a, a way can be found to ensure that the formation of a government talks can take place and that actually government can function as well um, in, the, in the interim period. And um, So I think that need, needs to be considered and I would ask, them, ask the government to look at that as well because I think that is vitally important. Um, in relation to the, the uh, microfinance bill Ireland itself, um, I think it's, it's obviously very welcome. Um, and I listened to the contributions over the last couple of days and talking about the, the interest rate that's been charged on the legislation, on the loans that are, have been, you know, and it's, it's, it does stick in your craw to see that interest rates of five and a half, six and a half percent are being charged when uh, normal interest rates are, are, I think, around about half a percent or one percent or something like that. There, you know, and, and that that is, I think, a barrier. I don't know, and I would love to see uh, information about uh, how big a barrier it is, because I'm not sure. If, um, I would imagine that if I was in business and looking at going down the tubes. If you could get money at 5.5%, you would take it to keep yourself going. It mightn't be what you would decide to do, but I mean, it's, it's definitely something that you would, um, would have to consider. And I think that there may be a lot of other issues around actually why there's a, such a poor take, a take up. And when you look at the Microfinance Ireland the website and stuff like that, there, that definitely it does on first looking, it does appear to be uh, successful. Like when you see so far, there's I think 3,169 loans have been approved, which is um, protecting something like 8,020 jobs, which is very welcome. But then when you look then at the figures for the actual number of micro enterprises in the state, where well, there's 249,000 micro enterprises who have all been affected by the, the COVID crisis at the moment. And you would imagine that the demand and the intensity and the need for finance to, to keep going would be actually increased. And when you, look at, when you look at that, when you look at the amount of loans that have been approved, and I know we've had this lacuna period where they haven't been able to uh, grant loans, but the amount of loans represents nod point, nod one, two percent of microenterprises in the country that, they, that have received loans from Microfinance Ireland. Now, I think that myself is, is extremely low, and, and I wonder even if this bill had been passed in time and the money, the money had been placed, I wonder would it be significantly higher or much higher than that. But I mean, I, th I think we should be, it should be looking at a stage of maybe 15, 20, 25 percent of businesses should be applying and getting loans for that. So I think something needs to be looked at even further in terms of the, the loans. It's either the, the amount of um, information required, the amount of business work that has to be done, the cost probably involved in getting work, getting your loan in place so that you can meet all the paperwork that's intended for the loan. So I, I do really do think that needs to be looked at and, and needs to be addressed. And I would love to see some. Um, 
some report and just on, on actually what are the barriers for businesses and and um, uh, attracting loans you know, because uh, there's no doubt the small small enterprises or micro enterprises are the key to all our constituencies I, I believe and uh, right across the country and there's a hu huge amount of employment there and there's a huge amount of there's a huge amount of people who are actually probably wor wor working small businesses or micro enterprises that are ba struggling anyway at the best of times, and probably well, would need would need that support, and I think that's uh, that would be vit vitally important. So, um, I mean, every everybody's supporting the legislation, that's, and that's 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 right as rightly so. But I do think it needs to be looked at and evaluated over over time as to what actually the actual barriers are. Now, the interest rate interest rate probably is one of the barriers, and maybe because of the publicity that has gotten stuff like that, that has prevented people from actually looking to access the funding, but. Um, I think there's a, an awful lot more barriers there that are in place, and a lot of, a lot of small businesses wouldn't have the level of paperwork maybe that was as required to um, go go into to look at look at loans. And also then there's a, the uh, there's one item as well in relation to de minimis aid, whether they have got for the previous supports. I don't know what impact that has on the ability of Microventures Ireland to actually lend to to a small business, but maybe it's a barrier that prevents them from going further with an application. Um, so that needs. To be, I think that all needs to be looked at, and um, because I do, I do believe that the amount of businesses that, that are applying to it needs to be increased, and needs to be increased significantly for it to have a genuine uh, impact. And but I, I think that's very important. I suppose just on an aside, just in relation to us looking, looking at, at the criteria for qualifying for the zone, and, and it's, it's interesting to see that illegal economic activities are barred from loans. <laughs> so I, I imagine that's. Um, I wonder why it even had to be put on the the the, um, the criteria that you couldn't have if you were an illegal ent enterprise, you couldn't actually apply for a loan, um, which is which is good. But um, I just wonder why it has to be there. Thanks, Chairman.